halflings. I fear no man, but that thing natural too. It scares me. Hey, what's up, everybody? Scorching Ray here, and unfortunately, that's gonna be 6 to 6 fire damage. Anyway, how are you guys doing? Hope you're still alive. <laughs> Before jumping into today's video, I just want to quickly, kindly ask you if you're not yet subscribed to the channel to consider doing so now. It only takes a moment, you can undo it later if you want, and I appreciate it a lot if you do so. Thanks so much for that. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. All my female NPCs sound like Monty Python ladies. When you suck at NPC voice. <laughs> Okay, yeah, and every single character sounds the same. Yep, that's uh, <laughs> and that's pretty, that's really quite accurate for most DMs, right? Gotta keep them on their toes. DM. Everyone, roll a constitution save. Player. Uh, 16? 16 is good, right? DM. I am pretending to write something down. <laughs> okay, never mind. I thought that the roll went bad or something. Um... <laughs> I, I guess they're just messing with the players, I don't know, that's, uh, that's my take from this. Job satisfaction. Often, being a dungeon cop is more like being a glorified janitor. Ever wonder who keeps the torches fresh in an ancient and seemingly uninhabited dungeon? Of course not, nobody has. I swear, I spend half my time refilling loot containers, because nobody leaves anything for the next guy. How's it hanging, Harold? Hardly working. Help, save me, dungeon cop! Sorry, I can't. I gotta feed the sewer monsters. Oh great, rat chum again. But somehow we are the monsters? And look at this <gasps> It's a basic fire trap that you wait 5 seconds and then run through. Rinse and repeat until the whole party has passed. It's not exactly missile magic. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I mean, that sounds like a pretty bad job already, but if you include the fact that he's a skeleton and basically lives forever... <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's... that's just terrible. It took about 3 minutes to restore order to the table. Monk, who's a first time player, can I flirt with the barkeep? DM. Uh, yes, what would you like to say? I tell them that I'd like to merge their root chakra into their throat chakra. Our bard, who took yoga. <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't think you need to take yoga though to, to at least, uh, you know, have a guess at what the meaning behind this is. It's all fun and games until someone gets omi eyed. When you tell your players that your world is gonna be based off Japan and they think that you mean anime, but you really mean the economy and work conditions. <laughs> Ah, oh, god damn it. Yeah, that's uh, just sad. I mean, it's, it, it's not even funny, it's just sad, to be honest. I'll allow it. DM. Okay, you do suspect one of these people is a werewolf. What do you do? Bard. I wanna charm the werewolf into revealing itself. Oh, come on, we talked about this. No, 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 hear me out. <laughs> Bard staring intensively at the group of people, <laughs> then asking who's a good boy. <laughs> And of course, the werewolf starts, um, I don't know what you call that, wiggling his tail, I guess? I told you I didn't need to use it for the plagues, guys. Moses tells the people that he can't make food because his divine intervention is on cooldown, 13th century BC. Yes, I know it's a generalization, and yes, I'm sure it doesn't apply to you. Level 1 backstories be like, I was a god, Valeria, and I found it beneath me. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, being a god can be, it can be really boring, I mean, and uh, really not enough sometimes, I totally get that, yeah, it's really understandable. Rogues. Rogues never change. When the paladin is asked by the rogue to bail him out of jail for the 19th time. No, I don't think I will. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think even 5 was too many, but Jesus Christ, you did this 18 times without getting tired of it? God damn, like that's some that's some dedication, honestly. That, you, that was a lot more than a second chance, okay? Spicy rolls tonight. Rolls a natural 20 perception. I can see through time. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it works. <laughs> Clerics navigating Avernus be like... I'm against necromancy, but I'm using it to fight demons. Cool. We can be friends until the demons are dealt with. After that, it gets difficult. If I only could, I'd make a deal with God. 5th edition players, when their character dies, even though they get like a million death saves and can have negative hit points. <laughs> they do be a bit overly dramatic like that, don't they? <laughs> The bad guy does not have to wait for the party. The party has to stop the bad guy. DM. Now, how do you proceed knowing the big bad evil guy's plan to burn the continent? Party. Yeah, we were gonna go to that tavern with the magic beer. How does that save the continent? It doesn't. We're gonna save the continent later. 
yeah, sure. Stepping out, your drunk eyes recognize a familiar face and could you believe it? They appear to be burning the continent. <laughs> Big bad evil guy. I'm not going to be ignored. Jesse using brain. Sacred flame is broken. What? The spell only requires you to see the enemy and it ignores cover. So you can basically put a cleric in an adamantine box with only an eye hole to look through and just be invincible. Jesse, what the f*** are you talking about? <laughs> Stop making your bad guys idiots. Bard player. I'm just gonna use my deception skill and tell the guard that the big bad evil guy sent us so we can just avoid the whole dungeon. I can't get below a 19 anyways, so it should work. DM. Yes, the guard seem to relax after you tell that. And they say, oh good, we had some adventurers running around disrupting our operation, so we were worried. We just need the password for this week and you can enter. The bard. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's one way to deal with that problem. <laughs> Twos are the halflings' critical failures. Halflings. I fear no man. But that thing, a <laughs> natural two, it scares me. I mean, they can still get ones, but like, yeah, the, the odds of getting two ones in a row is like really, really small, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's just got to be unfortunate. The Matrix has you. You alter the monster stat block. That's cheating. I do what I need to do so that the table can have fun. You think you've beaten every monster you've encountered legitimately? <laughs> oh god, yeah, no freaking way, absolutely no way. Every time. When a stranger enters your D&D group and you have to pretend to be normal f human beings for a few sessions. <laughs> uh, until they get used, until you get comfortable and, uh, you know, don't need to pretend anymore. <laughs> I don't know why people seem to tolerate players like this. A perfect D&D party. They have their differences and are not always at the same side. But when the going gets tough, they have each other's back. But what if someone works against the party because that's what their character would do? Then we ask them politely yet firmly to make a new character or leave. I can't wait to visit my old home and all my family members when the campaign finally gets around to your backstory. Rogue to the Warlock. I used to live here, you know. You're gonna die here, you know. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. The, it's always about dying with the rogues, isn't it? Why it spooks me so bad, I'm not fully sure, but it does. If you wanna play D&D so bad, just go on looking for group forums or something. Strangers, very scary. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's fair enough, I guess, but like, if you, you know, it's still a good chance that you find normal people that you can play with after a few attempts at least. Um, I don't know. Sometimes, the sword is mightier than the pen. Why, DM? Why? Look at this guy, blaming me for something that's probably not my fault. Why did it have to be immune to charm? <laughs> DM starts laughing. He looks re <laughs> looks like an evil laugh in the last picture. Why though? I'm a sneaky fox. Sneaked in your house, sat on your couch, ate your pasta and altered your campaign to be about the power of friendship and romance. <laughs> that, uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't sound bad. That does not sound bad at all, actually. I can't be the only one, right? Character creation. <laughs> and then the character after five sessions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is that even the same character at this point? Jesus Christ, man. That is a lot of character development in only five sessions. <laughs> Where do we draw the line? Are the indie memes explaining how you're a terrible DM for not letting your player be a half tiefling, half Asimar that is mechanically an Arakokra, that is an old sworn warrior blessed with a holy book that they cast their prepared intelligence spells from, that multi-classes into an intelligence-based warlock after making a deal with a genie that gives them clockwork powers? Flavor is free. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it just kept going and it kept going for so long. <laughs> Giants and trolls that help build cities. I'd love to see a classic fantasy thing where the stereotypical personalities are mixed up. The halfling thief is stoic and serious. The barbarian is bubbly and cheerful. The lady magician likes ale and headbutting things and the dwarf sings gentle lullabies and walks softly. The thinly veiled fantasy world version of a Native American has a wicked sense of humor and constantly plays pranks on the rest. The normal farm boy of destiny plans to join up with the villain at the first chance that he gets and world domination sounds excellent. 
The villain treats his underlings with respect and compassion. His hot daughter gets both medals of honor and surprise birthday parties and she wouldn't dream of siding with his enemies no matter how nice and or handsome their leader is. She and dad want to take over the world so they can improve it. Unicorns stab people. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the last one sounds the least like I would not be surprised if that would actually happen. Especially in a party full of rogues. When the level 1 party starts sharing their backstories at the tavern and it's the paladin's turn. Sitting in judgment of other people is the greatest way to make yourself feel better. Let's just play DM approved characters. Uncontroversial. I'm gonna build the character that I want, optimized or not. Okay, that was always allowed. Players responding to moral dilemmas be like Player, you present me with a two-pronged road. One leads to hell and the other also leads to hell. DM, choose wisely. But meaty fool that you are, you do not realize that I can simply walk off the f*** <gasps> road. <laughs> I dig the new Vecna design, but it is ripe for a memeing. Vecna the handsome leech says The book in my ribcage is skeleton erotic. <laughs> ah, okay dude. Of course it is. Of course that's what it is. It do be like that sometimes. <laughs> uh, players looking at each other with probably an evil plan in mind with the poor DM in the middle. Okay. Allow me to introduce the newest member of the party. Quandale Dingle. The party whenever they come across an NPC with a funny name or a weird voice. You amuse me. I will make you mine. Screw Quirling. I can fly now. My Kenko's reaction after becoming a war raven looking exactly the same but with the ability to fly. As long as you ain't no full caster. Mother, when I grow up I wanna be a knight. Oh honey, you don't wanna be a knight. <laughs> Swing. This is a barbarian household. I guess as long as you still destroy your enemies it's okay. <laughs> just, uh, just don't be a full caster I guess. <laughs> Very out of context meme. Me, when I realize that I can just cast Charm Person instead of spending 40 minutes giving the enemy a mommy. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, good realization I guess. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Oh, and they border each other. My homebrew setting be like, standard medieval human kingdom and steampunk elves trying to set up a space program. <laughs> Better notes than I usually take. Me. Okay, you guys hang tight while I go over my note from last session. The single post-it on my DM screen. There was a sewer, man. <laughs> that's all the information you got. Jesus Christ, that's uh, that's amazing, actually. <laughs> Alright, on that note, that's gonna be it for today's video. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like if you did and subscribe for more if you haven't already. Also, thank you to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon as well as on YouTube as channel members. I appreciate it a lot, so thanks so much for that. Links below if you wanna check those out as well as links to the social media, Discord servers, Arbitrary Mingles. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time. Have a great day, bye.